it was great to come home, obviously. Uh, it's, it's always nice and you know, this is a special place for me, but to be able to come back on uh, homecoming and uh, you know, it's a beautiful day and, and I'm excited obviously to get to Spartan Stadium and feel that energy and that atmosphere is, you know, is irreplaceable for home. Questions for uh, Drew? Hey Drew, what's going on, man? Hey, I wanted to ask you a couple things. Um, one, when you were here, you were supposedly the gritty guy that just kind of got it done ugly. I want to know now that you know you well into your NFL career, you were a different guy now. How would you describe yourself now, as far as your game is concerned? I think you know, I'm always going to play the way that, that I play. You know, that, that's how I am. That's how I was raised, and that's what inherent, you know, was inherent in me. So. You know, I think you have to be smarter as you get older. Um, you, you become wiser on what you can do and what you can't do. Especially the NFL, those guys, you know, are a lot bigger, stronger, faster than me. And so, you know, I definitely have had to change my style of play. But overall, you know, you can't change the type of person you are. And and when you're on the field, and, you know, it's only been a limited amount of time since I've got to play in the NFL. But you know, that uh, that same style comes out right, wrong, or indifferent. And uh, you know. It, it, it's something that I've had to be more conscious of while I'm out there playing and, and smarter. Drew, uh, Connor said the other day that you kind of reached out to him last year. Can you kind of describe your relationship with him and also just your thoughts on his progression? Yeah, I mean, that's one thing that I take very serious is trying to talk with guys, especially quarterbacks, um, you know, being a former player, being in their shoes. And understand what that's like. You know, not many people can empathize with what they go through on a daily basis. And you know, I just wanted to be a resource for them. I don't have all the answers, um, but hopefully, some of the mistakes that I made, some of the bumps that I incurred along the road, uh, could could help him out in any way, shape, or form. And did that with Tyler as well. Uh, I've done that. Obviously, had a relationship with Brian when I was here, uh, and same with Kirk. So you know, you try and form relationships with guys and reach out to them. And you know. The, like I said, just be a resource. Be somebody, you know, everybody goes through ups and downs in their career, especially playing this position. Uh, so, so just want to be somebody that, you know, encourages them, lets them know that, you know, to continue to, to do what they're doing. And, you know, ultimately, you're the leader of this team. They take on the identity that you have. And Connor's done a great job with that uh, as he's taken over and felt more comfortable in that leadership role and, and done a tremendous job with it, obviously, all the way through last year. But you can see this year, uh, as well. He's a different guy out there in regards to how people look at him, how he's viewed, and, and uh, you know, the homeless is on him to take this team to where it wants to go. Hey, Drew. How's it going? Oh, good. How are you? <laughs> good, good. Uh, can you compare and contrast Spartan Stadium when you were here compared to this new facility? What are your thoughts about I think this is the old locker room that we're staying in. You know, I missed the trailer, and this is, I mean, this, this is a gorgeous facility. I got a chance to see it for the first time today, but you know, it's a long time coming. I think it's a testament to Coach D and what he's been able to accomplish with uh, within his short period of time here. But uh, you know, we've been able to, as uh, the university, establish ourselves in the Big Ten as you know people that are going to be contenders every single year, and that's our goal. I think uh, on the walk over here, I mentioned it to Coach D. I said that that Rose Bowl victory last year meant so much to so many people, um, and it really meant a lot to. Everybody that showed up out of Pasadena last year, and I think it was a huge relief because that's that's our number one goal here at Michigan State is to go to the Rose Bowl every single year. That's the goal, um, and, and you know to be able to attain that is something that's special and it means a lot to other alumni as well. You know, and everybody you talked to felt really good about coming off that. And, you know, the nice thing about where we are right now as a program is there's a lot of stability, and uh, you look at it, the the type of guys that he's bringing in here and the success that they've had, it's not just a flash in the pan. It's something that I think is, is built to last, and, and that makes you feel good as a former Spartan that, that was able to come in here and, and uh, play and you know put that helmet on, on Saturdays. Drew, you mentioned uh, Brian and Kirk. Uh, what's it been like to see them have the kind of success they've had this year alongside them? It's been great. You know, I think that if you look at what we've been able to do individually, um, it's, it's a testament to, you know, not only the type of individuals that we are, but also you know this this university that helped raise us. You know, the, we are where we are today because we went to school here. And uh, you know, when I addressed the team this morning, I said that I said Coach Manning has had as big of an impact on me as anybody. And uh, you know, I look up to him and 
you know, he's a man that, that I try and emulate because he gets his hands on you when you're a young freshman and by the time you leave here, he's taught you so many values and instilled so many things in you that, that make you a better person when you leave here. And, uh, you know, you're, you're, you're going to have to go through ups and downs and it's how you deal with those times of, of adversity that make you who you are and really test who you are. And, you know, all three of us have taken very different paths to start in three weeks or two weeks ago now and uh, winning football games. But, you know, I think all of us would say that we wouldn't have it in a way because that everything that you go through helps you to where you can go in the future. Drew, we were kind of joking that this is quarterback you now. But, the, you know, but this is a program that's known for its running game and its defense and everything. Why do you think you guys were able to emerge uh, out of here? And I know you keep in contact with those guys, and do you guys kind of exchange notes or whatever? Yeah, you know, I, I think it, the biggest thing is luck. Let's, let's be honest. I mean, there's not many times where you're going to get three guys. I mean, that, that's a span of, you know, 12 years if you really want to divide it up all the way. But, you know, eight to ten years realistically of guys that were here in this program and went on to the NFL. And so, you know, that's a, that's a rarity that you get something like that. But it's a testament to the type of people that were recruited here. And, you know, it, it is a special thing to, to be able to wear the green and white and to be able to put that on. I think all of us took that very serious, the, the role that we had in this program and, and how much time we enjoyed our time here. So, you know, it, it's, uh, it's nice to be able to draw on those resources when you see those guys. Um, and, and, still constantly talking with them and trying to, you know, to stay in contact because you know, we've all been through the very similar things, like I said. So to be able to come out on top and have a little bit of success is great, but we also realize that it's just, you know, one small step in the process of where we truly want to be. Um, as honorary captain this homecoming weekend, what was your message to the players this morning? And uh, when I get a chance to do something like that, I try and keep it really simple. And, and I, when I talk with people, uh, you know, I want people to walk away and have something that, that they can take away from the conversation. I just said, there's two things that have allowed me to get to where I am. And I said it has nothing to do with anything physical or anything like that. It's just your attitude and your effort. And that will take you much further than anything else. And if you approach every day and worry about the stuff that you have control over, you're going to be a lot better at it. And uh, you know, it took me a while to learn that. I'd be lying if I said that it didn't. But again, after I realized those things, everything else seemed to become a little bit easier. And uh, you know, I just told them that to not take a single second for granted. And you know, it's obviously being an older guy now, sitting there, it's easier to say because when you're in college and you're young and you're having fun, you don't realize it. But you know, we, we had a lot of former captains in that room today, and it was awesome to see young, old, everybody come back. Um, and we all share that common bond of being a Spartan, and that's something that can never be broken. You didn't have the, the kind of success that they're having now when you played here, but as a former player, not that far removed, do you feel like you had a role in, in building it, building this program like the way it is? No, to be honest with you. I think that, you know, it, it, like I said, the, the change, I, I think that, you know, Coach D has done a tremendous job of coming in here and having a lot of success. I can't take any credit for that. That's all him. That's the players that he brought in here. Uh, you know, we, we did some really good things while I was here with John L. Smith. I'll stand by that man until the day I die because he had to endure a lot. He went through a lot behind the scenes that people didn't necessarily see. And, and he's another person that, that um, you know, I, I owe a lot to. And uh, he, he had to take the fall for some things, but he came in a difficult situation. Uh, I came in under Bobby Williams. and. There was a lot of turmoil at that time, uh, but he, he did it with the utmost class. He, he took a lot of pressure off of his players to allow them to go play, but you know, I, I can't take credit for anything that's going on here right now. That, that's all Coach D, that, like I said, that, that's what he's been able to do. You know, that, that's, that's the identity we always wanted to have at Michigan State, is a tough football team that was you know, going to go out there and leave it on the field. And that's what I try to do personally and try to do with the other guys that were in the huddle with me on offense. And, do I think I was successful in that regard? Yes. You know, those guys I still constantly keep in touch with. Those guys are like brothers to me, and you know we've been through a lot. And you know, I think, like I said before, everything you go through, you should try and take the positive from. That's what I've tried to do, and that's what's made me who I am today. Well, as I can stand up here and be a proud Spartan. You know. For one other thing, I think you did something no other quarterback really did here before. You're on punt team which is about as tough as it gets. And then when you think back on that 
Was that a sign of, you know, you just kind of do whatever you're, you're told to do or, or whatever you can help the team? And does that kind of help you bring about the message of being tough when you talk to other players? Well, I think anytime you have to say you're tough, you're not really tough. You know, like you talk to, when you're around people and, you know, if you have to tell somebody you're tough, don't tell me you're tough, show me you're tough. And that's been my whole message the whole time. And, and you know, talking with those guys that put it went in line with what you were saying, I, I couldn't tell you my stats while I was here. I couldn't tell you any of that stuff. Um, you know, I, I could tell you every single guy where he was from, my memories with him. Um, and I can tell you that I had 14 tackles on special teams <laughs> my redshirt sure freshman year. You know that that showed the guys around me how much it meant to me to be able to put that uniform on. And you know that was some of the proudest moments of my time here because everybody kind of looked at me and well then they threw me out there it was kind of a joke. And then all of a sudden I hit somebody in the mouth and I'm like wow this, this kid's taking it kind of seriously. You know that was my whole mindset. Anything that I could do to help the team that that's just kind of the, how I was. You know made how I was taught to do things in life, that whatever your role is, go out and do it to the best of your ability. And, and I, I wasn't the starting quarterback then, and you know, I went out there and, and enjoyed playing special teams, thought that I could help the team, and you know, I think also having to overcome that, that ACL tear you know, made me a stronger person too. There was a, a point in time going into my redshirt freshman year where I didn't know if I was going to be able to play football again. I was doing everything in my power, and my knee wasn't responding. And you know. Luckily, by the grace of God and Sally Noble, uh, you know, I'm able to overcome that. But we, we constantly work hard, and we were talking about this morning. You know, she is, she is unbelievable. And, you know, I wouldn't be here without her today because my knee wasn't responding, wasn't doing anything. And we tried all these different types of ways to bring it back, and it finally started clicking um, the way that I wanted it to. did that, and then, you know, waited my turn, waited my turn, waited my turn, and then, you know, I was the third quarterback in that year, my redshirt freshman year against Notre Dame, after Damon started against Rutgers and then Stephen Reeves, so, you know, it, it was one of those things that, that, like I said, making the most opportunities as, as they come to you, and, uh, you know, I was, I was fortunate to do that, and then was able to go on and start for two years after that as well. Drew, what would you kind of say is the biggest thing that's maybe helped you prepare and stay ready for your opportunity when you, when you did get that start a couple weeks ago? Well, I think that, like I said, worrying about the stuff that I have control over. I always have tried to focus on that because if you start worrying about stuff that you don't have control over, when that time does come, you don't want to look back and say, gosh, you know, I wish I wasn't. You know, nobody's going to feel sorry for me, so why would I feel sorry for myself with what I've had to do? You know, that was well documented, it was over 1,300 days in between starts when I last touched the football field and I was like, it didn't matter to me because mentally I'd been preparing for that opportunity. I knew that you know I was going to do everything within my power on a weekly basis to be able to go out there and you know maybe I don't know, maybe I don't ever touch the field, but as soon as wide receivers are coming off the field, as soon as I have an opportunity to see something, I stay in tune. You know, I'm fortunate to have a good relationship with our head coach and our offensive coordinator. So I can go up and talk to them throughout the course of the game. Hey, what do you think about getting to this play? This is the coverage. This is where we have the game plan. So knowing all that, staying in tune, you know, this is a job. This is what I do for a living now. So, you know, it, it would be doing an injustice to not only the team, but myself and my family because this is how I provide for them. And, you know, I take that job very seriously, and I want to make the most of that opportunity when it comes. And, you know, usually if you go four years between a start, you're usually not in the NFL. And if you get a chance to do it and you don't have success, they're going to try and find somebody to replace you. That's how this league works. They're, they're always trying to find somebody to replace you. And, and I'm cognizant of that. I'm aware of that. But at the same time, I'm, I'm not giving my job up easily.